Here I'm going to show how to convert from a cash basis to an accrual basis. And we're going to do it for our cash sales, our revenues other than sales, and our purchases of inventory and other purchases, and payments for operating expenses. And for our examples here, we're going to look at changes in our account here. And this is how we do it. Say, for example, here, unearned revenue. At the beginning of the year, we had a $22,000 balance in it. End of year, $28,000. So in this case, we had an increase here of $6,000. So we credit our unearned revenue for $6,000. And in the case here where we had a, a beginning balance of $22,000 and end of year balance of seventeen, dollars we'd have a reduction here of $5,000. So we would debit or we reduce our unearned revenue by that amount. And then our revenue and expense accounts here uh, as part of our net income, those are used only for calculating our accrual basis and those wouldn't necessarily not be the exact debits and credits that we'd be making here from our uh, balance sheet, but they're used for making our calculations. And then the other thing to remember here when we're working with a cash basis accounting system, all we have is either a cash paid or received and then it would be recognized either as a revenue expense over here. And for our accrual basis here, we add in these other accounts like the unearned revenue and uh, accounts payable as our liability accounts. And then for our asset accounts here, we'd have like accounts receivable, inventories, and prepaid expenses. So uh, these uh, other accounts here, like these accounts receivable and the unearned revenues, that would not be used in the cash basis accounting system. Okay, to convert collections from the cash sales basis to the accrual sales basis, we start with our accounts receivable here on the balance sheet. And any, any increases or decreases here in our accounts receivable get balanced with our sales revenue here on the income statement. So let's look at the case here where we had an increase in our accounts receivable, say of $50,000. Then we would have credited our uh, sales revenue for that amount. And then for the case where we had a reduction or a credit here to our accounts receivable, say $10,000, we would have debited our sales revenue for that amount. So let's go down here and look at the case where we did have this reduction of $10,000 in our accounts receivable. So we would have debited our sales revenue for that $10,000. And then we would have credited our sales revenue here for the cash sales that we made. And in this case, it was $100,000. So for our accrual basis, all we'd be looking for is the balance here between the credit of $100,000 and this debit here of $10,000 and that balance is $90,000 and that's our accrual basis. Now in the case here where we would have had an increase in our accounts receivable say of $50,000 we would have credited our sales revenue for that increase and then we would have determined our accrual basis simply by uh, taking the credit balance here of the $100,000 cash basis plus the credit here for that increase in accounts receivable of $50,000 and then our uh, sales revenue and it would have been 150000 on the accrual basis. Okay, to convert collections from other revenues, from the cash basis to the accrual basis, we'd be looking at our unearned revenue account here, and that would be for other revenues, and also our accounts receivable here for other revenues, and they're on the balance sheet here. And any of those changes in our unearned revenue or our accounts receivable would be balanced here with our revenue account on the income statement. So let's look at the case here where we actually had a reduction here or a debit to our unearned revenue for $5,000. So our credit would be to our revenue account here for $5,000. Now looking at the case where we had a, a debit or an increase here in our accounts receivable for $50,000, our credit would be to our revenue account here for $50,000. So to determine our accrual basis, all we would do is sum these credit amounts. Now we had a cash uh, basis here for the collections on those other revenues of a hundred thousand dollars. So we'd add this decrease in our unearned revenue of five thousand dollars plus the increase here in our accounts receivable of fifty thousand dollars and we'd have a hundred and fifty five thousand dollars. That would be our accrual basis here for this revenue or other revenue. Now to determine this 
uh, revenue account. All we did is we looked at the changes here in our unearned revenue and our, in our accounts receivable. And any of those changes get balanced here with our revenue account. Okay, to convert payments for purchases of inventory and other purchases from the cash basis to the accrual basis, we'd be looking at our accounts payable and our inventory account on the balance sheet. And any changes in our accounts payable or inventory account would be balanced here in our cost of goods sold for, uh, for purchases as part of net income. So let's look at the case here where we had actually a decrease in our accounts payable for the year. We would have debited the accounts payable for that $25,000 $25, in this case. And the credit would be to our cost of goods sold or we'd reduce our cost of goods sold by that $25,000. Now looking at the case here where we had a debit or an increase of $20,000 in our inventory account, we would have credited our cost of goods sold for that $20,000 or we'd have reduced our cost of goods sold for that $20,000. So to determine our accrual basis, all we look for is the balance here between, in this case we had a $100,000 debit uh, for this cash basis of the uh, payments that we, uh, or the purchases that we made, and then this credit amount here would be subtracted from it. So we'd have, in this case, we'd had an accrual basis of $55,000. The $100,000 less the $25,000 and the $20,000 here. And that's how we calculate our accrual basis, simply by looking at the changes here in our accounts payable or inventory account, and then the balancing amount would go to the cost of goods sold. All right, to convert payments for our expenses on the cash basis to our operating expenses as an accrual basis, we'd be making the same adjustments as we did in our inventory example. But in this case, we'd be looking at our accounts payable for expenses and our prepaid expense type accounts here as expenses. And we'd be looking at any, and those would be on our balance sheet here, and any changes here in our accounts payable for expenses and our prepaid expenses would be uh, balanced here with our expenses, uh, operating expenses here on our income statement. So just go through the example again here where we had a decrease in our accounts payable, say of um, $25,000. That would have been a debit amount to accounts payable. And then the credit would be to our expenses here for $25,000. So if we had an increase here in our prepaid expenses or a debit here of $20,000, the credit would be to our expenses here for $20,000. So um, to determine our accrual basis, we would t uh, s uh, look at our balance here between our debits and credits. And we had a debit here of $100,000 or an increase in our expenses of $100,000 based on the cash payments that we made. And then we would subtract out these credits here that for the reduction in our accounts payable and our increases here in our prepaid expenses. And then the balance here would be, uh, in this case, $55,000. And that would be our accrual uh, basis here for our, our operating expenses. Okay, in summary, when we're making these conversions from the cash basis to the accrual basis, we're going to be looking at our asset accounts here and our liability accounts on the balance sheet. And any changes in these asset and liability accounts would be balanced with the appropriate revenue or expense account here as part of net income. And what we do is we look at the cash basis that we either paid or received, and then we sum the debits or credits due to the uh, changes here from our asset or liabilities and then the balancing amount here would be our accrual basis.